of our meeting is to show you that uh, the SDGs can be practically used in the Community Foundation's work. And together uh, with our experts, we will show you how, how they did it and how easily they can be implemented. And uh, we have four experts for women this time. And we have Zuza Komornicka from the Snow Mountain Community Foundation in Poland. We have Teres Kleisz, uh, Kleisz for, from Peksi Kozosegi from Hungary. We have also Kristana Metea from Fundacja Komunita Ratara Fagarasu from Romania. And we have uh, Lucia Finkova from Nadacja Revia from Slovakia. And before we will move to presentations, I, will, I would like to invite you to the discussion that will be conducted after all the presentation. If any questions will appear during any presentations, please write them down in the chat that our presenters can, can reply later. And now I will give the floor to Zuza from, from Poland. And please give us your, your presentation. Hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here and to tell you about our project. But I'm also really excited to hear about each other experience. So let me share. Okay. Can you see it properly, my presentation? Yes? Yes. Okay, so um, every organization has, has a dream. And especially in our region where political, social and the economic situation is quite difficult and where unemployment, especially right now during the pandemic, is quite high. We have plenty of those dreams. But as shows, um, but uh, often those dreams and ideas for our projects meet cruel reality. And we start to think what happened, what goes wrong, and why we can't move forward. And the thing is that you have to have good plan, idea, leader, and money. And that was how our project Street Law for Women Vehicle for Self-Development was created. We had a leader, we had money from the foundation, from the yeah, from foundation. So in this part, please let me focus on idea and plan. Our plan concerns particular sustainable development goal, gender equality. What I mean, we wanted to, here you have all indicators, but in general speaking, we wanted to emphasize the role of women in our society. And we also wanted to increase their participation in decision-making process in political, economic, and public life. We also wanted to eliminate all forms of discrimination, aggressive behavior, and harmful practice, practices against uh, girls and uh, women. So, how, so uh, what was the plan? We wanted to strengthen women and girls by delivering them practical know-how, which will develop and improve their professional and private life. We also wanted to integrate them in local environment. We wanted to show them how to find out reliable and creative approach to find uh, practical solutions for their problems. We also wanted to show them how to use flow and not to be helpless in particular situation of, uh, for example, domestic violence. And also we wanted to create a space for women who want to deliver their own ideas, but mostly for women who are looking for opportunities, how to develop, uh, uh, how to find solutions for particular problems. So how we did it. We had workshops and consulting, and mostly those workshops regard partnership, the divorce, children maintenance, 
social I mean hate in social media, consumer rights, and in general, those workshops, the aim of these workshops was to help women to understand how to fight all kinds of discrimination. And also there were second parts of workshops which were focused on uh, potential development, team building, effective uh, communication, especially between different sectors. And second thing was uh, to this lasting conference and the bite woman of the snow mountain and I think it was one of the best events we have ever organized in our region. More than 100 women uh, participated in that event and this is what was important that during this um, conference, during the gala, we awarded women that were nominated by our social, local society. So for example, daughter could nominate her mom, that she's a lovely mom. You could nominate your teacher because of his devotion and his passion. You could nominate your neighbor or business leader, female business leader, because of the way how she is affected. So there were more than 50 women nominated. And our conference and all this debate was had like three cru crucial parts sharing experience education and support by sharing experience i mean they were inspiring speeches made by delivered by local but also national experts business leader representative of local uh, government ngo sector for example, we had Ashoka representative who told us about program that strength women. And we had also in that part, this was really interesting. We call this fuck up stories. And I think the one of the best inspiring speech that delivered Polish alpinists, it was the first Polish woman who won the crown of the earth. She told us about her failures and how she and uh, move on after those failures. So this was ovation, uh, standing ovation, it was really inspiring. Second part was educate. So there were workshops with lawyers, former judges, community organizers who teach us and how to mediate instead of fighting and how to deal with hate speech, how to fight uh, with domestic uh, violence. And third thing was support. So every woman had chance to uh, talk to her, her and PR manager, personal trainer, psychologist, who, uh, who told us how to improve your relationship at work, for example, with your employee, at home with society and with your body. I mean here like more like, uh, like well-being, how to improve it. And why this program worked? There is, there is, there was, and there still is a deep need of initiative that inspires women, educate them, and give them support. And um, second thing is that our program was based on cold methods. So what I mean here that there was very active involvement of every woman. We delivered them know-how, and in practical way, we showed them how to use it in everyday life, and later on they can improve their um, attitude. I mean, the way how they work every day. We had great experts and certified trainers. We had great cooperation between three sectors, business, local administration, NGO sector, and also support of media. We have great PR campaign, and in fact, everyone wanted to be a change uh, part of the project. So what were the benefits? Um, because of local cooperation and that we boost potential and um, gave great opportunities for those women, they start, they had, they bond relations and their new partnership starts between social entrepreneurs, business leaders, local government and media. Also, women realize that uh, knowledge of law uh, pays off and it helps you to make wiser decisions. And also this project inspired women to start new projects. And they were more active. They set up meetings, they set up events, they applied to our programs for, for a granting program. And here you can see photo of our calendar. It's also behind me hanging is a calendar of women that inspire us. 
So you can see here uh, Frida Kahlo, Meryl Streep, uh, Mary Poppins or Marilyn Monroe. And other thing is that, and I think I'm very proud of that, that in fact, right now, women set up their own Facebook group. Right now, there's like 180 women, and they inspire each other, support, educate. So every woman, when she has a problem, psychological problem, every kind of problem, she can always count on women. And in fact, we don't have any impact on this. It's, ha it's just happening. And I think this is more or less about our project. I was also asked to tell you about pandemia and our activities during the pandemia. So probably I want to be very innovative and original. All we, all our, most of our activities were moved to virtual world. So we have online meeting, uh, online psychology support, consulting. We have also, because of our cooperation with local government and business leaders, we are able to produce 100 uh, masks and aprons and that we deliver to hospitals and particular initiative groups. We have also online education in our leisure center. And this is what might be quite innovative, I think. You can order a walk. What I mean? A few weeks ago in Poland, kids that were below, youth that was below 18 years old couldn't go out with, uh, without an uh, old person. So imagine, for example, a kid that is 15 years old, that has five siblings, they had to stay all together in very small, tight flat with aggressive parents, parents who are drinking. So those kids, they could order a walk with our teachers, coordinator of our leisure center, so they can talk, they can read, and they can change the environment. This was really important for them. And, uh, and well, we are also active in uh, social media because many shops were closed, many of our uh, friends couldn't work, so we support each other in social media, even simple like or comment that buy this product or support them is very important. So that's our plan, how we save and strengthen local solidarity. Thank you. Thank you, Zuzia, thank you so much. And now it's Teres' turn who will tell you about projects for disabled people. Teres, are you? Yeah, nearly. No so, hi, everybody. I'm sorry. You are so young and obviously skilled in this. I am trying my best, but it's not enough, I can realize. So um, I am from Pech. The pronunciation is Pech, uh, Southern Hungary. Uh, community foundation board member I am and we are a rather young uh, community foundation uh, only three it's our fourth year now what we are doing and that was our first ever grant uh, we did have a chance to do it uh, from this Polish Academy and uh, when we heard about the call uh, we, we, we immediately uh, tried to explore the sustainable development goals and I can tell you that in Hungary, it's not, uh, how to say, it's not on the political agenda, even now, and it wasn't. So, so practically nobody speaks about sustainable development goals. Only in the official uh, programs, uh, they mention it as a usual must. But the people practically are not uh, really uh, embracing the idea at all. But when, when we read it, uh, uh, so now I see, at first we didn't know the indicators. So now there is a structure I am showing you that 17 goals we know. Always we see that the 17, never the targets and never the indicators. So practically what I can say to others who will come in the future to go and uh, try to to, to make their own indicators practically because even the structure used now by OECD, by Eurostat, by all these international organizations, they are very complex to us, very, very integrated, very, very unmeasurable in a way. So we have to find out 
or how we will measure whether we attained anything, whether we achieved anything. Now, what, what were the programs for? Uh, but of course, you know that. I am just uh, showing you that uh, the, the theme we did, that was disability inclusion in our city. And dis disabled people, of course, it's one of the groups which are always mentioned. So we have found the goal for quality education uh, and quality lifelong learning. Uh, goal 10 was our main uh, target, reducing inequality. Uh, and goal 11. So goal 10 and goal 11, I think, are very general. We can always use them, making our cities inclusive, safe, resilient, sustainable. And uh, the last one, 11.7, was our target, really. Universal access to safe, inclusive, and accessible public spaces. And there was another one, which at first I didn't uh, think that they would be a good goal for us, sustainable consumption, production. But it turned out that sustainable tourism, which is very much uh, uh, focused on by our partner, uh, that was an issue. So we dealt even with that. So uh, at the end, it's an integrated area. Uh, there is an interlinkage between the goals, so we can start with whatever we want to, and we are going to end up with others. I, I think that was the way how I saw it. Um, uh, community Foundation, so we haven't done any project ourselves. Uh, we usually do uh, collecting donations, fundraising activities, and giving out grants. So that was the first ever trying to do something for community leadership type of thing, and for the whole city, citywide uh, integration project to, to a little bit to support uh, our partners. Uh, People First is an association, a local branch of an international association, and it, uh, disability came to our mind uh, because this local, later future partners were always uh, uh, trying to get us to support them. And that's how I realized that there are a lot of organizations want to do something for disabled people. Or, uh, and that's why uh, then when we realized the Polish call, we immediately thought that it could be a citywide type of project. Uh, people first thought uh, and came out with a sticker. We call it a sticker project. Practically, they designed this sticker and they explored the, the city, the bars, the restaurants, the public buildings of whatever kind uh, to, to make, to mark uh, accessibility on the entrance door. And uh, what they did, there were access audits done by a wheelchair user person and by an able-bodied one and 53 places were uh, getting this marking, this uh, type of uh, sticker. And it later it turned out that there is a international, or European at least, uh, uh, website, a tourism website, this wheelmap.org, which practically is for sustainable tourism for wheelchair users. And we did give them the information. And there was a big sensitization in the city because the people always uh, talk to bar owners, uh, uh, institutional leaders offered information on the ramps and other type of aids and they were very, most of them were very uh, progressive in it and they tried and they rebuilt their structures so practically uh, sensitivity or awareness raising uh, worked well. And uh, People First, this uh, partner, they were later asked to participate in another international project. Another partner is Svetsko Paritinka, it's a, an NGO as well, and they uh, created a website and PR materials, video clips to to make uh, non-disabled people to offer a joint activity opportunity for the disabled ones. So that's their idea to, to target uh, the people. And uh, actually what they did, uh, the pair, so make a pair for the fun, meet each other and have a joint activity. And it turned out that uh, 30 offers immediately were made. Usually 
uh, small enterprises, small service giver enterprises were on the list, like yoga uh, entrepreneurs. For example, 10 disabled persons at the end of their project joined the yoga sessions and like that. Uh, uh, and there was another thing, outdoor games for awareness raising. They tested it in the different communities and they employed six disabled persons as animators who actually gave us the outcome that they were dream jobs they could imagine. They did get a little money for it and uh, they enjoyed uh, the meeting with others and all in all it went well. Now the programs of this uh, sensitivity development type of games. Uh, one game was invited now to the zoo, to the local zoo, and th they regularly offer it for families and for uh, company teams for team building exercise. So practically in that sense they were very uh, good. And uh, the last one that uh, you asked in your before, I mean, when you wanted to evaluate the program, that whether it's possible to replicate the program. And now in Budapest, uh, Civic Radio, and in another city, so there are two other cities who would try to do this type of Fair for the Fun website uh, again, and it now became a social enterprise, because uh, the website is good for asking donations, and 60% of the money goes to the original founder or 40 percent there so there is money involved so social enterprise uh, activity and experiment uh, which wasn't in our project it's only it was an outcome later and i am happy that it will be go, go for it and the guy who did it told me that if there is an international interest it's possible to do in whatever context so please reconsider about it uh, the third partner was a university student group dealing with uh, social inclusion and uh, they dealt with uh, uh, workshops uh, and uh, gamification was the method now everybody seems to use uh, games uh, collaborative social games so board games and they have invented certain uh, games like that and they tried in workshops inviting elderly people uh, disabled people and high school and university school students so we called it the vision of tomorrow workshops uh, and it's a tradition, so this year it's going on for the same targeting group. And we, we were very happy that a new course, there are 10 uh, faculties at the university, so a new campus course for all of them, we called it Opp Opportunity Bridge, was uh, uh, launched. And three civic uh, organizations dealing with the deaf or the visually impaired, so several disabilities, they are heavily involved in the designing the, uh, the course and they offer field practice for the students interested. So I am very happy. And now uh, it wasn't our initiative, uh, others did it, the inclusive university concept, but so far they haven't done anything. So now we are as Community Foundation, we are working with them to do an action plan, a real action plan, and not only the concept, so to make it as a reality. And uh, it was very good for us as a Page Community Foundation, so a not very well known uh, organization so far. Uh, at first, we wanted to create, uh, actually, these partners wanted to create a disability council a council at the local government. Uh, that's why we invited uh, Hungarian and foreign experts to tell us about how does it work in the local uh, government work. Turns out that this councils, so practically we reverse the idea that the councils, there are councils for other issues, but nobody really takes them very seriously at least in our political type of context so now we are doing and organizing a bottom-up network a voice a voice and a cross disability voice which actually proved much more difficult than i thought so because they don't like each other very much so the groups so the deaf and the blind and this and that they they are not easy to work cooperatively with so we have to much more target this issue to 
to do that and empower them to really become a voice in the city. But so now it's going on after the project. So we couldn't done it uh, within the six months given to us, but now I am, we are heading towards that. Uh, we did, ha we always do have giving circle events uh, as a fundraising and we were happy to, to collect donation to a Paris Bart group quite a lot, rolling basket, a basketball group. And uh, at first we didn't want to do official partnerships, but suddenly a, a quite powerful government uh, organization, Page Brand, uh, offered us the opportunity and we took it and now we are working for this uh, politically uh, more uh, stronger uh, action plan and body. And so that's my last sentence practically that we were uh, able to create uh, good contacts, much uh, deeper networks, and we are now in the city landscape of disability inclusion, which we weren't at first at all. So thank you for the for the call for the Warsaw Academy. That was what I planned. Thank you. Thank you, Darius. Thank you so much. And now we will move to Christiana and to their project and uh, projects, including youth. Christiana, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm trying now to share sure. the screen. Can you see the, the screen? Yes. Okay, that's great. Hi, I'm Christiana. Uh, nice to see you and thanks for inviting me here. So, um, Sarah Fagarashli Community Foundation has uh, the aim of consolidation, uh, consolidating the capacity of local communities in uh, our area. As such, we contribute to the achievement of most of the SDGs through the brands, uh, scholarships and activities uh, we implement. Primarily, we address issues related to education, inequality, well-being, being environment, rural development, gender equality, cities, the built environment, etc. Um, a specific project we developed having the SDGs in mind was Youth Bank Academy. Second time in a row in 2019, Youth Bank for Garage was financed by the uh, Global Challenges Local Solutions for the summer program called Youth Bank Academy. So this is our poster where youngsters were invited to become the heroes of our community to participate to the only development activity from our area. And their main idea was be yourself for a better ourselves. Uh, we started the program um, with a call enrollment during the month of May last year, where youngsters between 14 and 25 were selected for this academy. The Youth Bank coordinator offered training sessions for the Youth Bank Academy members in the area, such as uh, entrepreneurship, civic and sexual um, education. And one of the foundation board members offered information and knowledge over the development challenges and SDGs. Uh, we're talking here about Stefan Cibian that you met last, year, uh, last time on uh, the webinar. Uh, goals we focused on were four. Uh, 8 with target 8.6 and uh, 17 with target 17.17. First step was uh, launching a conference where all the relevant stakeholders were invited in order to combine panel formats and, uh, formats and speeches with work groups on the identified SDGs from our community. Youngsters presented in front of the relevant people from our community and stakeholders what are the SDGs. After the presentation, we had time for open discussions and small activities for cool people. <laughs> this uh, start uh, helped everyone to know each other and find their purpose in the program. At the same time, passing through the first chapter of the, the story of the changes of which the Youth Bank Academy teams were um, the authors. Um, next in summer, we had four weeks to do, uh, during the summer holidays when um, teenagers from uh, Youth Bank Academy had daily meetings with the international students from Hong Kong and Turkey. And another two weeks, the meetings were between international students and smaller children, 17, 7 to 13 years old. 
The activities of this project is part of the non-formal education parameters and have as main uh, purpose the personal development of students, intercultural understanding, improvement of moral qualities and communication in English through practical experience. A main idea of this session was to familiarize the community with the SDGs and for that we had a couple of uh, mixed sessions with children and parents to show them how important it is to explain the SDGs from a young age and support them to implement any ideas they will have in the future in order to help our community. Uh, three days in July, we organized a camp where the tr a trainer from Social Award Impact had a speech and then a workshop about social entrepreneurship. Local stakeholders were able to join us and the students could ask questions about uh, their way to success. And uh, then, as Youth Bank for Garage decided to be part of the global movement No Plastic July, we dedicated an afternoon cleaning up the streets from the small village that was uh, our home for three days uh, during the camp. At the end of the fourth month of the project, the students came with lots of ideas of projects in a hackathon. The best six ideas were chosen, and during the scholastic year 2019-2020, they were supposed to work on their projects that were presented in the last week of September in Shark Tank. Um, I'm, I was saying about uh, they were supposed to because they started their the, uh, projects, but uh, because of the pandemic in the last uh, couple of months, they had to stop. But hopefully they will continue in uh, next scholastic year. Okay, uh, what was the impact of the project? Um, we focused on goal four, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. We did so because we see equal access to education as key for sustainable development and active local communities. Our strategy relied on well-designed educational process, the Youth Bank Academy that target youth and support them to become leaders and uh, vectors of education, awareness, social change and proactivity in the community. Uh, Youth Bank Academy was an educational program based primarily on peer education that included the necessary experience for enhancing youth uh, leadership and impact in the local community. The program was open for high school and university youth from the garage area and included forming um, a learning community of students that focused on producing social change in their community bringing together young people from different areas and social categories which thought that through trainings we help in the future substantially reduce the proportion of youth not in employment, education and training. You're thinking about um, target 8.6. We saw Youth Bank Academy as a program for young people and also designed by the young people we find that the ownership of the young people over the content of the program to be essential for a real and long-lasting impact. In consequence, we offered all the support we could to the Youth Bank Academy and Youth Bank Academy team and have encouraged them to be proactive and engage in uh, all the activities of the project. Next, uh, we have uh, Goal 17, with target 1717, encourage and promote effective public, public, private and civil society partnership, building on the experience and resourcing strategies of partnership. Our core approach was based on uh, taking the Youth Bank Academy at the next level. Um, as I told you before, um, last year was the second time when Youth Bank uh, Academy was implemented here in uh, our area. So uh, we try to transform it in, into academy for the entire community while uh, maintaining a key focus on youth and uh, education learning about the SDGs. Uh, the new Youth Bank Academy maintained the educational and community engagement as the key component and uh, will add to other components, a wider community engagement, which brought different community stakeholders in a discussion and learning process about SDGs and the uh, solution generation uh, mechanism in the form of competitions for project and business uh, ideas like um, we took the american um, idea of uh, the shark tank 
where um, youngsters presented a project and then uh, invited everyone to donate for uh, their projects to happen in the future. So um, this was quite uh, our uh, program. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. And uh, now we will move to, to Lucia Finkova that she will tell you about the connection between SDGs and their environmental uh, project. Lucia, do you hear me? Yes. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so I'll try to... So, is it visible? Okay, great. So hello everybody. My name is Lucia Finkova from Slovakia. I work as a, a project manager in small um, Carpathian Community Foundation, Rebia. Um, we decided to work on this project a year ago. Uh, it's called Waste Will Not Disappear. So as you can see, it's a little bit environmental topic for a change. Um, our community foundation works in communities, obviously, uh, in small Compathian region, and our goal is to uh, develop this region towards um, some uh, good cooperations. Um, so, basically, the SDG number 17 partnerships is essential for us. Um, we work not only with um, communities, and municipalities, but also uh, with the uh, private sector. And um, that's why we also uh, wanted to connect our partnerships uh, with uh, issues that have developed in our region. A um, few years ago, uh, there was a big uh, controversy about uh, dumping fields and growing dumping fields in our region. Uh, especially in, in um, cities of Pezinok and village Dubava, which is close to uh, our home base, um, town of Modra. And we wanted to do something about this uh, to save the environment for the next generation. So basically uh, respond to the SDG number 12, uh, reduce the consumption and production, but also number 15, which is to develop and, and um, strengthen the life on land. Um, so we wanted to do something about this uh, because Slovakia also ended up as one of the uh, last countries in Europe to, to do proper recycling and reducing the consumption and waste production. Uh, so we kind of started our project, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, um, I would like to just say that uh, we worked with uh, several groups of volunteers from this region, specifically from town of Modra. We also involve uh, the municipality uh, of Modra because this statistic that I'm talking about from the EU is also kind of their problem because the municipalities have to do something about the, the um, waste um, reduction. Um, we also connected the private sector with several donors and, and, um, and local businesses. But the main problem was to kind of convince local people of Modra that the big amount of waste that we have is also their problem. Um, because if you ask anybody on the street, they will tell you they know how to recycle properly, but they don't really understand why it is that we need to cut down on doing the, the uh, making the, the waste. So, um, and I have like a little game for you. It's not a game, it's more like a survey. Uh, so this is what we did on streets and with several um, people that were willing to answer this question. So. Could you maybe connect these four items to the years that they will decompose in dumping fields that we have nearby our city? You have a, a baby diaper, plastic baby diaper here. Then you have a, a Tetra Pak milk, so cardboard or something. Then styrofoam box for lunch and a can. So 
maybe you can think about it for a second and connect it. Okay, do we have a question? All of them need a lot of time to decompose, that's true. Even 15 years is a long time, isn't it? So uh, this is the correct answer. So maybe you can now check it. It's quite a long time. And this is just only one single part of the problem of waste. And that's what we try to explain to our, um, to people, the inhabitants of Modra. Uh, they were very, very surprised. And this was one of the first um, impulse for our project to start because we understood that people don't really uh, acknowledge this problem. They don't understand that it's the waste that we produce doesn't end in the trash can, but it goes and has a life that is much, much longer than ours. Um, so we started with our project. Uh, uh, with uh, analysis of two, oh, uh, sorry, um, four specific um, dumping places, which like waste stations near block of flats and, and houses in Modra. Uh, this is the result that we got. You can see that 40, 64% of the waste of a single trash can uh, could have been better recycled and didn't have to end up on a dumping place, dumping fields. Uh, this was only a part of our uh, analysis. We also um, ask other NGOs that are, um, that, are uh, that, spec that work in fields of waste to do analysis of documentation and all processes in Modra, uh, how the waste is managed and uh, what the municipality does about uh, about waste. We did this with people and we found out that this is quite a big uh, amount of waste that we just dump and don't do anything with it. Um, so we started uh, an awareness campaign. Uh, awareness meaning we, um, we invited the private uh, designers, graphic designers to to uh, make these banners that you see on the right. We placed them on those waste stations. We placed them also to uh, apartments of the people so they have the access to, to information how to recycle better, how to reduce the waste production. So we don't have to um, dump as much stuff as we do. Another problem I would mention here is that um, Slovakia and also uh, European Union will eventually raise the fees for, for dumping waste. So if you don't recycle or you produce too much, your fee will rise as well. So that's another way how to kind of um, convince people that waste is everybody's problem. So uh, we try to uh, inform people about why it is important and how to do it better with you know, via these banners, information, um, flyers, uh, also several happenings uh, right there near the, the way stations. Uh, we did educational activities with kids, also um, appeared on a Christmas market where we offered um, mm, sustainable um, alternatives to Christmas presents so people don't buy something that is just um, usable once but several times or it's um, made out of some recycled materials. Uh, here we, we connected with local producers. We asked them to, to donate their uh, products and that was also a way how to fundraise some money. Uh, here we also talked um, with uh, the municipality members, not only um, the Department of Waste Management, Waste Management, but also the council and everybody who was attending that specific meeting. Uh, people were very surprised that 
this is something that they haven't heard of or not uh, considered to be important. So that was also uh, useful for us. Um, and here, if you have a phone by any chance, you can scan this QR code. Um, we, we try to launch a, an online app, not app, more um, e-guide where people can scan uh, and have it in their phones. And this uh, e-guide shows you exactly how to uh, recycle proper in town of Modra. Um, what to do um, in order to, to reduce the waste that you produce. And also uh, it shows uh, local businesses where you can shop um, uh, eco-friendly. So for instance, without any packaging or uh, you can uh, not buy something new. However, um, uh, re repair something old. Um, so there is also like a map of, of local eco-friendly or green businesses. So this was another part of our campaign. It was more interactive because our goal is also to um, attract people to give us their ideas or their uh, information. So uh, people send what were sending us via Facebook or email their ideas where you can buy something um, that is organic or or without packaging, et cetera, et cetera. Um, after the awareness campaign or the interactive campaign, uh, we started to cooperate with local schools. First of all, we wanted to do some education, but people in Slovakia or like, like um, students get a lot of theoretical information. So we wanted to do something more practical and we started our third phase of um, this project, which was, which were echo watches. Uh, we worked with 15 kids and they monitored the waste stations that we had the analysis from for two months. They would measure the volume of recycled bins and also the, the communal waste, so the mixed waste bins, and compare them. Uh, so that's how we kind of uh, measured the success of our project. Uh, to be honest, that I'm gonna talk about it later. Uh, the lesson, one of the lessons learned is the awareness campaign is not enough. We need to do some more um, activities or, or uh, take a different approach because the change was small. There was a change, but it was quite small or we, at least um, wanted to be a bit bigger. However, talking with these kids and based on our next activities, uh, at, we got them to think about the problem and be more interested in it. So I consider it to be uh, successful. Um, for some reason there is, oh, okay. Um, and these are the activities that we, um, that we did after the project being finished. Uh, first of all, during the pandemic, uh, students that participated uh, in Echo Watches uh, formed a platform on Facebook called Green Modra, where they shared their ideas, videos, manuals, or idea, well, ideas or opinions, how to uh, live eco-friendly. So, uh, they posted, I don't know, guides to make a homemade compost or, or um, they, they posted some information about uh, how to recycle in Modra or, or something. Very nice activity uh, that they were, it, that it was based on their ideas. So it wasn't really our idea, but they wanted to do it with Revia, so that was great. Also, several volunteers started their community garden. We found some money to, to find, um, to, to repair a local uh, high school, old high school. Uh, the town of Modra, the municipality gave us some, some uh, property. So we started a community garden. 
and it's still it it's going on people are attending there they're growing their own crops so that's great um, we will do uh, after this pandemic because it's not possible now we want to do a survey with citizens of Modra to collect their motivations barriers and opinions why it is so difficult for them to recycle and um, what would help them to do it better and then we want to do final analysis if that those motivations were um, useful and, and accomplished also we want to expand to other municipalities so we would like to ask other towns and villages to to be um, to cooperate with us and do something similar as we did in Modra and hopefully we will expand to the whole region so as I was talking about lessons learned the first we learned that blocks of flats don't recycle as much as family houses um, because of the um, anonymity if you live in a block of flat you don't care you just go down and toss whatever you need if it's in your house people kind of um, care about others opinions so they are scared to not recycle or because you can see whether the recycling bin is big or not whether you're uh, not big but full or not um, so we feel like the anonymity anonymity is a big problem also block of flats uh, lack containers so people don't really have enough space to recycle you get usually three or four mixed waste or communal waste and one or two plastic and paper containers there is no containers for for organic waste which was at, at it was 32 percent of the whole mixed bin so that was one third of it so that would really help there is no other container for anything else such as iron or um, yeah there is glass but not really uh, for for other other uh, materials um, as i was saying the only awareness campaign doesn't help so we need to know what people want or what's their opinion and the barriers as i mentioned um, and also the survey is going to be not just asking people if they recycled or not because obviously they will lie or not lie but they don't want to say like no i don't do anything and and come up like a lazy people so um, a professional uh, advised us to do a panel discussion so we would like to hire a professional organization not uh, like an institution agency um, who, who specializes in in uh, discussions and that way get the real opinion and motivations and barriers of Modra inhabitants uh, to recycle better or care about waste in general and that way um, fulfill the, the SDG number 12, uh, sustaining reduced waste generation through prevention, recycling and reuse, which we have uh, started by the awareness campaign, but it's not enough. We did the first step, but there are so many other steps ahead of us, we guess. Um, yeah, and we would like to involve more and more pa partners because it's not only people living in block of flats, but also local businesses that gave us, for instance, those styrofoam boxes. So you can pack your lunch and the, then the styrofoam box will be there for 10,000 years after the lunch is being eaten. So um, that way we also want to continue fulfilling the SDG number 17 and encourage and promote effective public uh, public, private and civil society partnerships. So um, I believe it will help us. Many people gave us a very good feedback uh, on this project. We also got uh, some um, funding for this from the municipality uh, and also uh, private donors. So hopefully after this pandemic, because um, 
this pandemic hit us really hard with this project since people put their health ahead of uh, environmental issues, obviously. Uh, so we couldn't really do any analysis, we couldn't meet, but also with all of this protection, facial masks and gloves and, and uh, material that has been used, it's really difficult to talk about waste reduction. So hopefully it will get better for us. Um, so that will be it from me. So don't forget, you should reduce, reuse and recycle rather than just buy. And I'm happy to hear your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now, as we said before, it's time for you, our dear participants, to ask questions, maybe some specific issues appeared. You can unmute your uh, microphone or you can add the questions uh, in the chat. So it's time for you. And our experts are ready to answer your questions. Hi, can I jump yeah, in? Tell me, Helen. No, I think it was really good. I um, enjoyed very much all the presentations. And I was wondering um, if you've used in your communication um, the idea of the SDGs and has that had an, any impact on, on the perception and role of the CF? I don't know, perhaps better public recognition or donations, more partners, more funding. That's what. I am not sure whether I understood the question and if it was said, to me, but <laughs> okay. So if you've used the community, if you've mentioned the SDGs and the framework and how your project fits within the SDGs framework, and if that has contributed to um, any changes in the public perception, if you found more partners this, this way, or you got more funding or more donors, or has, has it affected in any way? Um, the result or uh, the implications of the project? Well, for us, we were lucky because the topic of uh, environmental issues is quite big. And before coronavirus, it was one of the, the biggest um, or discussed topics uh, that we had, right? So uh, connecting, uh, connecting the SDGs with our local problem and showing people like okay so it's a global thing and we have to start locally in order to solve the global thing because it, it, it's everybody's problem i think it helped it really did help so kind of like the feeling of compassion or uh, showing it's not only us but everybody else is doing it that it helped us a lot also uh, getting volunteers getting fundings and partnerships so for us it did help to show the framework great thank you and others uh, i think in uh, our organization well sdgs are global and they regard our everyday life but I think the way how particular community foundation look on them depends on a few factors. For example, in our region, because our region is poor, the social economic situation is quite difficult. We are covered, our region is covered with mountains. So for example, we don't think about climate because we have clear air and so on. But mostly we focus, well, because of the region, because of the local society, Youth, we can notice uh, youth migration. We can notice that um, there is unemployment is rising. So that's the reason why we focus mostly on supporting our local society. So, for example, we have a granting program, we have a stipend program that support youth, poor young people, but very talented. And we have our educational program. So we talk with people who listen to them and we want to understand their needs so that's the reason how come our program devoted for women come up because we realized that uh, sdg like gender equality is a huge problem in our region and for example we wanted to change stereotypes like the stereotype of women is to stay at home and take care of their kids 
and we want them to force them to give them more courage to do something more because women are more aware are well educated but they need tools so thanks to sdgs and those indicators we're able to define what is the real problem and that helps us a lot to find the solution like our pro like our project so you, you are you saying that it helped you crystallize better the issues that were locally and and understanding that that's exactly. a global issue but uh, it, it also has its roots in your community yes exactly as you said Thank you, Michaela. Do you have any other questions to our presenters? No, I was just curious if uh, anyone else, but I'll leave the space I know <laughs> have limited time. Thank you. Um, Teresa, I'm interested in your case. It's, it's a very similar question. Um, how was it with your organization? Is it like you started your work with uh, your project with disabled people and then you linked it with, with uh, SDG goals um, or how was it in your case with your organization and when you uh, finally connected it uh, and started to, um, um, to, to write up projects uh, um, for sustainable, sustainable development agenda, uh, has it helped you or how, how, the, how, the, how did it start? Okay, so as I told you, I, uh, I am the oldest, I think, among you, so, and I have always worked in the area of education and culture. And I think the goals, which, which are in the sustainable development goals, they are not that new goals, you know. So uh, against inequality, uh, for inclusion, for rights, rights-based approaches, so th these are long uh, uh, goals, uh, longer time used by cultural, educational, philosophers, uh, program. So in that sense, it's not a radically new insight which came by the sustainable development uh, goals. Uh, they reinforce that. So of course, uh, sustainable development goals were were formulated uh, using a lot of community approaches and you know participatory design so so in that sense i can't say that when we say that we are working for disabled inclusion uh, in that in our case it was such a radically new new idea in in, in a way so it it of course it doesn't um, how to say so it it it's uh, it's not particularly so it was a difficult area in a project to make it always to always emphasize it for people for journalists for anyone we came into partnership with practically they didn't bother very much and as I told you maybe it depends on the society itself or the municipality local context itself whether it uses as a political agenda element but not in our city and not in Hungary uh, in Hungary nobody speaks about I, I would be really interested to see uh, when the report will uh, go you know to see the the interim reports how the Hungary the country fares about it because practically the task was given to the central statistical office to do it that's it. So I know it because they went for it and they tried to see it. But practically a normal ordinary citizen would never hear about it because it's not, not emphasized by our political culture. They don't seem it relevant. Of course, creating more equality is there. So in, in normal cultural education professions. And maybe uh, the, the last presentation, uh, climate change and the green issues are much more easy. So that's, that's much more in the forefront of the, the local political agenda too. But other ones, so practically, so I think we made a, yeah, so we made a good job trying to communicate it, trying to use it, and it needs very much. I like very much that the youth bank project. So maybe it's worthwhile to start it with younger uh, generation. Yeah, uh, for us, the, the our university workshop was the most uh, uh, open to it. So when we did with the vision for tomorrow workshop, so the, the younger generation seemed uh, much more open to it, but maybe the older ones, you know, it, it was always a 
politically driven society always top down ideas and this mantra type of go so so people don't really bother they don't think it very seriously so so but maybe it's because uh, i have seen long uh, uh, I have seen things, you know, for a long time. So, but but I think it's important. It has maybe it will come 2030. We are having another 10 years. I know internationally that actually the targets and the indicators weren't uh, achieved. So it will be maybe a discussion that let's do something and maybe it will come to the fore much more and then the last 10 years would be more, much more intensive. But so far we could say that there is the law, there is the indicator and there are the U UN report in the case of disability, Hungary as a country got uh, very unfavorable reports back you know so practically the the country didn't do much uh, and now third or four times practically hungary law leg legislation modified it and uh, uh, i can see veronica hello in it she's the people first that uh, to create you know the uh, the pavement and the road structure uh, fitting to the disabled and uh, mobility restricted uh, needs. It hasn't been done three times, the country modified the deadline. So it's amazing actually that there are the good, good uh, legislation, the good ideas and really good goals practically, but uh, the, to turning them into the reality, it needs, yeah, it was like it's more than awareness uh, rising. It, it would need the uh, political will and it would need budgets and it would need real type of uh, design and impl impl implementation using this indicator model. But actually that's the international standard. Um, we do have in page, we dealt with this, equality plans you know since uh, we are member of the union the union projects demand this uh, what do you do for the more equality so please have your numbers have your indicators turned out that there are the goals and there are no indicators so the civic groups which we are working for they can't monitor because the account accountability of the municipal municipality is not there because political simply they they don't want to be accountable so so if you are not a real democratic society we have to work a lot uh, just to put these good type of targets indicators and goals to be uh, in front of us uh, as a guiding type of bar so that's how i see it thank you Okay, thank you so much. I just have to um, to say something because she, uh, um, Therese, she was saying something before that youth bank, uh, and we start uh, uh, with the goals uh, from the youth uh, youth age. Oh, from, from a young age, uh, to tell you the truth, I don't know, maybe it's the community, but uh, our youngsters weren't quite uh, very impressed. And um, the fact that we started working, in fact, that's why we started working with the children aged seven to 13, because they um, they were really open to, to all kind of um, new things for them. Although sometimes um, maybe at home they were doing this kind of uh, work, work and even at school, but they weren't realizing uh, what actually happens uh, worldwide. So, um, um, those from the um, academy, we have a small community, but uh, in the same time, uh, teenagers, uh, they are here in a group of uh, 13, 29 um, from uh, Youth Bank uh, in our area, there are 29 uh, teenagers and uh, in academy there were around 40. So um, we hoped they will be much more interested in, uh, in this uh, program. Um, on the other side, that's why we started um, our program with a conference to explain what are the SDGs. Uh, to tell you the truth, before I was in uh, Youth Bank and uh, in this program, I had no idea what are the SDGs. So everything is new for us and uh, we started step by step. Uh, and sometimes you realize, oh, we were doing this for so long. And again, I was, uh, was going to ask uh, Lucia about her program. Um, 
because we started, we, we tried to do something with recycle in our town and um, we were so enthusiastic and we, we do plastic recycling and this and this. And when we go to the municipality and ask them, how do you recycle? And they were like shutting us yes we do recycle and that's it and i was like yes we want to come and see and to make a video to explain people how we how you recycle and how you yes we recycle and that's it <laughs> and then they, they couldn't explain so we were trying they were putting barriers so the teenager was like okay so we are trying to explain people they have to to reduce waste and to recycle and uh, pl plastic and cans and everything and then they come with the same truck and put everything inside and that's it you know it's it's strange and and uh, that's why i was gonna ask lucia how how was um how, how are they communicating with uh, the the local uh, or or the community is big or they have uh, uh, fines or they have uh, laws that they are implementing because i moved in romania two years ago from malta and what happens there is incredible i, I said even one day on tuesday we had uh, organics uh, picking up on uh, wednesday we had plastic on thursday we had so they were and the fines were quite big and <laughs> for me it's strange here we don't we don't do Recycling. Here in Slovakia, it depends really on each county and each municipality. Uh, we have a really um, enthusiastic person in charge in Modra, so she is really willing to cooperate, um, as well as the the mayor. So uh, that was that was um, easy year for us. Uh, but also we invited this other, well, this other NGO that uh, specializes in waste management in whole Slovakia. And they are um, quite strong in, in giving opportunities to, to municipalities of the audit or analysis of every single part of the waste management process. And they would give us also a report on how Modra uh, is doing. So, so also that could be a good way uh, if the municipality is not willing to help you. You could maybe uh, try to find help with other NGOs that are focused on this specific topic. Uh, so that helped us a lot. Uh, so in Slovakia, generally people as well as in, in Romania, uh, feel that yes, it's very important and yes, I do that. But then you ask, for instance, so where would you uh, toss, I don't know, um, a shopping receipt so when you go to a shop? And the answer is 90% to paper, but it's not true. You shouldn't toss it there. So these questions I would use in order to convince the people that they're not really good at it. To, to put it, you know, it's not nice to do, but they, you get the momentum of uh, shocking people. Like, okay, wait, stop. So maybe I'm not really right because this is just a simple thing that I do every single day, but maybe it was wrong. So maybe show them that uh, the way they're used to do it is not always the correct way. Use some analysis, some data, some research. We did it also ourselves. Not only um, not only the, the the municipality help, but also we went and really with the students we did it just on ourselves. We opened the bins and we saw, and we took a picture and we had the proof. That, wait. This is not well recycled. You need to do something. Also, there, the, the argument that you use that the, the trucks come and everything goes into one place, uh, it's, it's frequently used. Sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. Uh, it depends on the car and also on the company. So you need to do an additional research of it, whether it's true or not. So. So I would say research is the key and also try to find help with other NGOs, not only the municipality, if the municipality isn't 
really helpful or willing to cooperate. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you, Christiana. Do you have any other questions? Do any other questions appear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have one more question to Christina because we work uh, quite often with youth and sometimes it's difficult for us to motivate them because of new technologies, new uh, their expectations and so on. And youth points are really interesting for us. And Christina, can you tell me what was the biggest obstacle that you have in your project? Um, we have Youth Bank. Uh, this is the sixth year of Youth Bank. Each year they change uh, because the, the teenager from the final uh, high school years, they're going to university so they can concentrate. And each year, uh, those from ninth grade, they're coming. So usually each year we have another team and um, the obstacles, so, uh, especially in, the, in this program, it was uh, because it was during summer, so you couldn't take them out uh, and coming to and do extra activities. That, that was the, the main activity because in, uh, what can I tell you is that each youth bank team in the end of uh, their uh, scholastic year, they finance some um, pro, uh, projects in the community of other teenagers. But this year they said, no, we're not gonna give money to others. So we're gonna do our own programs, our own um, projects. So uh, for them was quite, uh, this year was, they were very happy that because before, they were giving money and they didn't uh, know for sure if that project happens or uh, if it happens, if it happens how it's supposed to be. So this year as they had, uh, they were supposed to finance three projects, three of their projects, they, they raised money for six projects. So they were quite happy. Only the, the only thing that because of the COVID-19, they, they had to stop some of them. But now I see them, as soon as they finish school uh, now in uh, June, they will start uh, working on uh, edu uh, vocational education. So they try to to do things online from for now, but uh, yeah, they they are different. Each uh, each team is different because some of them they are still influenced by the team of before. So this team uh, now is now most of them there are. Uh, of 14 years old, they are new, they didn't know what happened, they are um, very active and uh, they want to do a lot of things, not like the one before that they were already on the third year and it's like, oh my God, <laughs> again, again. So you have to, I don't know, bring them all the time with new ideas and they, they need a coordinator that needs to be their friend and uh, in the same time to to keep them on hold <laughs> because sometimes their ideas they're very crazy and they, do what they want to do so yes this is okay thank you um i would like to ask uh, uh, our speakers uh, i'm not sure if uh, all of you maybe would like to tell something quickly on it um do you think that this framework uh, of SDGs, the targets and indicators are helpful when planning, uh, designing your projects or analyzing on any stage? Do you use it or um, do, do you think it's helpful while, while uh, designing a project? Well, as I mentioned before, they regard global issues, so we don't think about them, but from project point of view and from other organization point of view in fact they are uh, important especially those indicators because they help us to uh, define the problem analyze it from different perspectives and later on they help us to find the solution so i think yes they have impact and they help us okay thank you uh, and lucia um, you've told us during your presentation that um, uh, you have some lessons learned and like, things that you, you talked through uh, during the project that you have to change. 
so that just emerged after um how did it emerge like how did you get to know something's wrong like the way of analyzing it was just like, discussions among you or you had some indicators maybe just designed by yourself not exactly the SDGs one uh, but yeah what were your indicators so to so the first question we designed the project addressing the SDGs we connected the SDGs with the local issues and controversies. We had this dumping field that we needed to reduce because it will fl flood us eventually, the waste, but also the environmental topic is big um, uh, globally. So we wanted to, to uh, design it together. Um, so the framework was kind of like a guidance for us. So what should we address as steps or, or the problematic areas in our project con connected with the dumping fields and waste? And uh, to the second one, how we measured the lesson learned, lessons learned, um, yeah, obviously the discussion. Also the eco watches with the students, uh, the project was designed to measure it itself by, by definition. First, we did the analysis, then we did the awareness campaign, how to recycle and reduce waste. And then we monitored it with the students and we found out that the change wasn't big enough. Or maybe I'm just too greedy, but, <laughs> but we expected a bigger uh, amount of, of uh, recycling waste. Uh, and then we kind of uh, agreed that the problem is not doing only one-sided influence, but to still work with the people, um, connected with businesses, uh, connected with uh, the municipalities. So the partnership, we, we, we thought that the partnership could be stronger and, and therefore influence um, the results big, in bigger scale. Um, also, uh, we measured it via um, feedbacks. We did like this little uh, form that we sent to our volunteers. That what did they what they thought about the whole project? What th what they think the weaknesses are? So that's why uh, we we got the, these lessons learned. Also, some of them, uh, surprisingly, came out uh, at the beginning of the project. As I, as I said, we worked with this other NGO, uh, which did the deep analysis of documentations and the waste management pro processes in Mondra. And they told us that the blocks of flats are the weakest point, and then we need to work with those people because of the um, anonymity waste dumping and we thought it would be again um, it would be okay to use just awareness campaign because okay so we thought everybody had the need to do something with the waste but it turned out not to be quite true and uh, we have to kind of change the approach entirely well, not entirely not entirely but partially <laughs> okay thank you so much yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lucia. And as we are running out of time because it's already half past three, I would like to, to thank you all. Thank our presenters and all the participants. And as I said at the beginning, the webinar is being recorded and we'll post it within the next day on our websites. So please also visit our website, visit our fan page on Facebook to know more about the coming webinars and our activities. Thank you so, so much and hope to see you and hear you soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank bye. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.